So today's question is, what internet browser am I currently using and why? Okay, so I'm currently using three internet browsers at the moment, Midori, Firefox, and Chromium. So I am currently using Midori for a very specific purpose. I'm using it as my text-only browser. Uh, I have disabled uh, loading of images, uh, loading of JavaScript, and loading of embedded elements. Uh, in Midori and as a result I can quickly throw up a Midori window and if I want to look for some text based information usually on Wikipedia I have got not only a lightning fast browser but a browser that just cuts out all the superfluous stuff that you don't really need if you're only looking for text based information and it's really quite a joy to use it's also significantly more stable now that I've disabled so many of the um, so many of the features that it has um, because I know that it isn't the most stable of browsers by and large I actually really quite like Midori the only real problem with I have with it um, apart from the stability issue because it's kind of a mixed bag I think it depends what operating system you're running it on and so forth is that it doesn't really have that much in the way of add-ons but um, other than that I actually really like it and I like the sort of the default stuff you know the default um, elements that it co that come with it now uh, now we're on to Firefox and Chromium and I switch between these two browsers almost on a weekly basis because they're both really really good I don't have a massive preference for one over the other I like the fact that they're both there and I like the fact that we can choose between them that being said there are some strengths that one has over the other and vice versa so I'll start off with Firefox which is the one that I'm currently using at the moment I like Firefox partly because I like Mozilla as a company I like the fact that they have a strong appreciation for the open source software community even though that their logos are trademarked and copyrighted which you can kind of expect from a company everything else all of the code that runs their their browser is open source uh, and i like the fact that the tor project use the firefox code for their browser i like that there are so many add-ons available for firefox i like that it has a significantly more expansive api i like the fact that it uses less memory than chromium there's a lot to like about it I have mixed feelings about a lot of the new additional features that they're bringing in. And I say mixed feelings because there are some good, there are some bad. In fact, a commenter, I forget your name, I'm sorry, uh, mentioned, made a very good point in uh, either the last video or a couple of videos ago, the um, innovation versus gimmicks. Uh, he quoted Henry Ford by saying, if I listened to customers, I'd be focusing on making faster horses or something to that effect, which actually really stuck with me. That was a really good point. It's like, it's easy for me to grumble about any new gimmicks that come this way, but there are a, there are a good number of gimmicks that have landed and have moved past being gimmicks at this point. Uh, and the example that the commenter in question used was actually tablet computers. I don't use a tablet computer, but I certainly appreciate that for some people they are actually really, really useful and they're actually really quite portable and quite good for what they do for certain tasks. But when tablet computers were first brought out, i got to admit, I considered them a gimmick. So there's that. So what's a gimmick and what is actually... Um, innovation is is not always clear and i usually sort of recoil from gimmicks but that being said you know i'm i'm not always right heaven forbid hey heaven forbid so some of these alleged gimmicks that firefox might be throwing in could actually land and be quite useful and i've got to admit they brought in a share button that can share things to social media and other uh, services and i've got to admit i've actually found that surprisingly useful i've actually used that a number of times uh, per day even since i started using firefox so and I, I thought that that might be a gimmick. So I've got to admit, it, it's I, I am not entirely sure where I stand with a lot of the new stuff that Firefox is bringing in. Another example is Firefox Hello. I know that sounds, again, like another thing that they've loaded onto their browser, but open source software is lacking a, a decent video conferencing piece of software that just anyone could pick up and use. Yes, there are there are some things that require a bit of setting up, and, and I like software to be more accessible to as many people as possible, and having a nice video conferencing piece of software that you can just throw up in a, in a Firefox browser that just anyone can use is something that the Linux world sorely needs, really. It needs a Skype killer. And there are a few candidates, Google Hangouts, Jitsi, and Firefox Hello. And the stronger that all three of them are, the better, as far as I'm concerned. And the sooner that we get rid of Skype, the better as well. So I appreciate the initiative. 
even if I don't actually use Firefox Hello as much as I'd like to, and I like that they're developing it as well. I wish that you could have multiple people rather than it was, wasn't was just person to person, uh, but they say that that's because the video feed goes directly to the person that you're you're speaking with rather than through a third party server, which I appreciate. I like the autonomy in that. But that being said, it is very limiting. And it'd be nice if maybe there was an audio only feature where you can then broadcast to multiple people and then uh, bandwidth would be significantly less of an issue. I don't know how complicated that might be. They do say that they're working on um, group chats uh, on their long term strategy, but it won't be around for the short term. So Firefox, I do like that they're, they're bringing in new features because even if Firefox bring in a new feature and it doesn't really land that well, that's not to say that another browser might not steal the idea or that that technology might not be brought in as used as an independent piece of software by another open source project. So yes, all right, I might grumble at gimmicks like like so many other people, but the fact of the matter is from time to time they sometimes do pay off. So I'll carry on grumbling, but you got to understand, I'm I'm not always right about these kind of things. <laughs> so there's a lot that Firefox has to offer the open source community. I like that Mozilla have this, you know, they carry the strong mantra of open source, uh, free and open source software. So there is that. Even though there have been some questionable things that, that Mozilla have done, so there have been a, there have been a lot more questionable things that Google have done. Let's be honest. Okay, so on to Google Google Chromium. I like that Chromium, first of all, is backed by a corporation with a lot of money. I know that that's not always something that sort of leftist people like myself really say that often, but it does give you a great amount of muscle when it comes to software, and I like to see more money thrown into the open source community whenever possible. And, you know, WebKit is something that Midori, for example, makes good use of as well. And I do like that Google, again... The allegiance to open source software and free and open source software isn't as strong as Midori's. It's certainly not negligible either. I mean, they don't have to open source the Chromium browser. They don't have to open source Chromium OS. They don't have to open source Android, in, you know, or as much of it as they do. But they decide to. They do. And I, for one, appreciate the steps that they do take, even even if they're not 100% fully all the way there. You know, it is a big company and it's... You know, it is in the business of intellectual property, so that's to be understood, if not, you know, respected. So, what do I like about Chromium? I like the fact that the individual tabs run in their own processor, which means that providing your computer has enough memory, and my computer that I run all my Linux stuff on has 16 gigs, um, it means that the processes and the sim separate tabs don't interact with each other. So, if one website or one piece of, you know, one script on one tab causes a hang, it doesn't necessarily mean that the entire browser crashes, it just means that tab crashes. That, I think, works really, really well. It's something that I understand that Firefox are working on. I think they might even be trialing it out in their nightly builds, but uh, I really want to see Firefox implement that as well. It's a really good idea. I don't care that they've stolen the idea, or that Firefox are effectively stealing the idea. I think the Chromium, of, of that's a real strength of theirs, and it's made their browser significantly more stable than all other browsers, from the offset just from making that one sort of development decision there are plenty of um add-ons available for both chromium and firefox but and this applies more to chrome rather than chromium so chrome is the the f sort of the polished final google approved version of the browser chromium is the uh, the open source branch the open source variant but the google uh, the Google add-on store, the place where you pick up add-ons for Google Chrome and Chromium, and I like that the browser add-ons are b compatible with each other. I think that's a really big deal, and I think that's great that, that if it works on Chrome, it works on Chromium. But that being said, Chromium's API is not nearly as expansive as Firefox. The add-ons can actually do a lot less, and I have noticed that Google do not really like it when you install add-ons, or they actually prevent installing add-ons that break YouTube's, YouTube, YouTube's and Google's terms of service. The most notable being they don't like um, video downloaders uh, add-ons for Chromium. So if you want to download a video off YouTube um, and you want to use have get an add-on to do that for you, uh, you'll have significantly better success with Firefox than you will do with Chrome or Chromium. Um, I don't know whether or not that necessarily changes a lot. It's not something that I keep up to date with. But I do know that Firefox does have, when it comes to add-ons, it doesn't actually have to, it doesn't have any obligation to stay allied with Google Terms of Service. Um, 
So for all intents and purposes, the differences between Firefox and Chromium are not really that big, and they're closing in. They're getting more and more uh, what one can do, the other can do, you know, by the day, really. And I know that Firefox is, is a long time catching up to Chromium. Chromium, technologically speaking, is still out in front of Firefox, but Firefox is catching up, and I think that it won't be too long now before the browsers are distinguishable only from uh, a, a sort of a, a lame a lay person wouldn't under, you know wouldn't be able to identify ne or necessarily identify the difference or understand the difference between Firefox and Chromium. Uh, people who you know you guys who watch this channel obviously you will understand but I'm you know sort of your man on the street probably won't at, at some point. Maybe that point has even even arrived now. So Yes, like I say, those are my three browsers, Midori, Firefox, Chromium. They all have their pros, they all have their cons and I look forward to seeing how they will progress in the future. I think that the most exciting things on the horizon are from Mozilla and Firefox. That is usually the case. Um, I think Mozilla are looking to innovate a little bit more. I think that they want to catch up to Google Chrome and uh, Safari as well as much as they can. And I think that they, they are lagging behind and I think they are a little bit concerned about that. I would like to see Firefox catch up as well i think that they that mozilla and firefox have a lot to offer the internet and i think that having a free and open source browser and one that sticks to free and open source principles quite strongly you know it, it definitely has a place and even though chromium of course is open source and i believe it's open sourced under the bsd license uh mozilla is uh and firefox is released under the mozilla public license which is very similar to the general public license except that mozilla keep the rights to their artwork i think that's really the the core differences there uh and and yeah like if chromium is yeah yeah i think that there's there's space in this world for both of them and i like that they're both open source and um and i use both of them um, so that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below uh, and let me know which browsers you use and if there's any that you particularly avoid and also how important is your internet browser being open source i know that there are a number of you that are perhaps willing to uh, sort of excuse maybe games being proprietary and to allow some proprietary stuff on your system for the uh, purposes of pragmatism but when it comes to browsing the internet you like the piece of software or the software that you use to access the internet and the world wide web to be as transparent and open as possible for reasons of privacy and security and you know many of you said that that's where open source really is important to you uh, so let me know uh, all your thoughts down in the comment section below thank you very much for watching and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now